Both Aston Martin and Honda cannot wait for the 2026 season to get going. And why shouldn't they, with all of the positive signs pointing towards a highly competitive and successful 2026? This comes on the back of numerous news publications, media outlets, and of course journalists that have their insiders on the inside feeding them information about not only the Honda powered power unit that the Aston Martin team will now be having in the back of their Aston Martin cars, but of course the impact Adrian Newey himself and the overall 26 team are having with regards to the technical regulations. And it's a far cry from the last time Honda re-entered the realm of Formula 1 back in 2015. Everything is completely different. And let me get into what I mean by that very, very shortly. But before I do, if you're enjoying the content within this video and what you'll see afterwards, do hit the like button and of course hit the subscribe button as I look to hit 20,000 subs before the end of the 2025 season. Can we do that? Let's find out. Back when Honda re-entered Formula 1 and everything was looking very much an exciting prospect for McLaren and that partnership to re-emerge as a successful and competitive team, it actually wasn't necessarily the case. A journalist was given information back then and once again in 2025 now with regards to 26 and what he's been given differs dramatically. So back in 2015, he was given numerous pieces of information where they told him the engine was good in the single cylinder and practically bad in every other aspect. And lo and behold, as it turned out, that was pretty much the case with them taking numerous years to even get to a level of reliability, let alone competitiveness. Now this same journalist is getting a completely different vibe and feel from the information that is being feeded from perhaps team members in both Aston Martin and Honda. He says it's a complete 360. Everything is of a positive nature. The team is excited with what they're producing in-house. The Honda engineers back in Sakura are extremely confident in their technical expertise and know-how and knowledge regarding the hybrid engines that they've been using now for well over a decade at this point and they're not starting from the same starting position as they did in 2015. So with that being said what exactly do we know about the Honda power unit? Well of course there are numerous publications and articles by now that have given us loads of information and essentially, as we know, it's a split 50-50 in terms of uh, electric motor and the actual power unit itself in terms of it being a, you know, aspirated engine. And with that comes a lot more of a technical know-how needed in terms of energy management, energy recovery through regenerative braking and all of these systems and fuel and whatever else that needs to be intertwined within a power unit for 26 onwards. And all of these things point towards a highly successful design phase, a highly successful production schedule, and things are looking supremely good and confident for both sets of this overall partnership. Now, for a little bit of background information on the sorts of things we know Honda have been able to achieve with their power unit, let's go over that right now. The MGUH will disappear with the electrical side tripling in power. This means the battery will become essential. If it fails, the car is finished. Energy harvesting and deployment is also undergoing major changes, which in turn will affect race strategy and overtaking. The result, power units which are heavier, hotter and tougher to design than ever before. Every manufacturer has to start from almost scratch, albeit with differing levels of experience and knowledge. And thankfully for Aston Martin, they start from a point where they had the strongest engine at the end of this current cycle, believed to be having 5 to 10 horsepower more. 
and not only that, the knowledge and experience of building a engine which in 2015 was the worst on the grid by a considerable margin and upgrading it to what became multiple championships with Red Bull. Now for 26 we know it's a split 50-50 between the combustion and the electronics and of course that means you need a supreme recovery system on your car which Aston are rumoured to have. Now of course this is the level through which you can harvest energy around a circuit in one lap and then of course this has a knock on effect for each lap after that. So the more you're able to recover a higher level than your competitors the more of an advantage you will have over a race distance and that's why it's imperative you have such a strong energy recovery system. Second to that if you have that it then means you can save weight through having smaller rear brakes and they're not being utilized anywhere near the level you may have had to use them because all of the energy recovery is happening solely through the engine instead of through braking migration. So there are caveats to getting your recovery system to be top notch. And here's a brief breakdown of what that could look like across a race distance with examples of Mercedes being the best and Aston Martins being the one just behind it. Now the difference between both of these is going to be 0.9 megajoules of energy recovery per lap. The Mercedes will recover the whole 8.5 which is allowed for 2026 and the Aston Martin will be recovering 7.5. So that difference equates to 1.1 millijoules of continuous full power deployment across the lap of Bahrain. And that equates to 3.14 seconds of that 350 kilowatt boost each lap. So averaged across the lap, that car, the Mercedes, would have the equivalent of an extra 15 brake horsepower if the whole energy budget was spread uniformly over the circuit. But of course we know that isn't the case, but let's keep things simple for this video. Now that would equate to between 0.2 and 0.3 seconds per lap. That Mercedes with the better energy recovery is going quicker than the Aston Martin's Honda. Now across a 57 lap race that equates to between 12 and a half and 18.8 seconds across the 57 laps. So that is a massive number to give up. And it isn't just the engine that is being worked upon tirelessly. There is also the additional factor of the fuel. Through which Aramco is making major strides in the fuel that they will be producing and distributing to Aston Martin to run in 2026 and beyond. Now this shouldn't come as any surprise. This is something that happens tirelessly with all the fuel suppliers to all of the engine manufacturers up and down the grid. Shell do it with Ferrari, Petronas have done it year upon year with Mercedes and it's the same case with Aston Martin and Aramco. Again showcasing that Aston Martin and all of their partners are not leaving a single stone unturned. So there you have it, a highly revolutional engine power unit however you want to call it that is looking in terms of the Aston Martin Honda partnership to bring a successful and competitive start to this new 2026 cycle of F1 cars. And of course, it's going to be an extremely interesting time ahead as we get ever so closer, what now, maybe just a little over two months away from the actual first private test with all of the teams in Barcelona before they head to the public test in Bahrain and things are very much in an acceleration phase in terms of what they're all doing in-house at all of their factories and as such I believe Aston Martin are going to be one of the major teams to look out for during pre-season testing in regards to competitiveness up against the likes of the overall agreed upon front runners which will be Mercedes and that power unit 
Alright everyone, I'm going to wrap the video up here. Hope you've all enjoyed it. If you have, do leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new here on F1 Unraveled. And I will see you all across the upcoming free race weekends as we round out the 2025 season.